In this tutorial, I will show you how to set up a mechanical system so that this robotic clamp moves in this kind of complex and interesting way, but is still easy to control with just one bone. By the way, this tutorial is part 7 of my Patreon exclusive mechanical rigging course, where in each episode I teach you various principles of rigging, including robotic arms, legs, cables and gears. Hello! And welcome to the next part of my rigging course, which will be this thing here today. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as you can see inside, there are some uh, pretty interesting things happening. And uh, I will show you how to recreate the setup uh, in Blender, which um, I think might be a fun exercise in rigging and constraints in uh, IK setups. There are a few things that uh, might be a little bit tricky to see, uh, but overall, if you understand the core concept, then it's going to be super easy. So let's get to it and uh, I'll show you how to set it up. OK, so as you can see, I already modeled um, this clamp. Let's call it clamp. It's like a robot, robot uh, hand, maybe. And uh, I already modeled it, but it's not rigged. So as you can see, there is no like setup whatsoever. These are all loose parts that you can just move around. They are not connected in any way, but we're going to uh, create a rig and we're going to connect those parts to the rig so that it all moves properly. OK, so um, by the way, this core file, you can uh, find it below this video here in the post. So you can uh, just take it and uh, play it, uh, play with it for yourself. So, um, yeah, you can you can just follow along maybe uh, if you if you'd like to. Okay, so the first thing is, um, as with the other courses, if you've already seen the other videos, um, so first it is important to identify what is the source of the whole movement and how far does its influence reach the other parts. So if, if we look at this video here currently, um, you can kind of see what we're dealing with. So first identifying what is the what is the system, how is, how is it working? And especially here, we can see it very well. So this whole thing will move. So as soon this whole rod moves, it has influence up to this point here. We have a few pivot points, which is very important to, to identify. And we will only focus on this top part because later on we just need to mirror this uh, part to the bottom and it will immediately work. So we're just going to focus on this part here. As you can see, we have here a, a pivot point. So this means that the chain needs to be fixed on this part here. But we also have a pivot point for this one here. And we have a movable pivot point basically here. So what um, when it comes to multiple parts being intersected with each other and forming like a chain, um, IK constraints are actually very handy. And we already did some of those. So um, here we can, we can also apply it, but uh, with a few little uh, adjustments here and there so that it works properly. So as you can see, we just need to uh, basically follow this, this path here. So let's do this. So first let's put the cursor here and let's create a armature single bone. We will put this in front so we can already see it. And the first thing is to just create this chain. So I will do this right away like this. So this goes here and this is the first pivot point already. But just to visualize it a little bit better, I will also create these bones here for this part, even though it's the same thing. So this bone, bone is not necessarily um, necessary, <laughs> but uh, just to visualize the whole thing, it's, it's OK to have an extra bone here. And also this whole piece also needs a bone. So we will also, whoops, I just need to select this. We will just create the bone. Oh, let's make it like this. OK, so that's pretty cool. And also we will create a different bone with um, Shift A, just create a, another bone. This one is not connected to anything. This is very important. And we're going to set it up like here. So this is the second piece that will rotate. So this will be the one pivot point. This will be the other pivot point. So with pivot points, uh, as you may be seen in the other um, videos, pivot points um, are created with an uh, IK controller. So the IK controller is basically like an independent little piece that gives you control over one end of the chain. So we have this as one, one start of the chain that we can control, but we also need an end to the chain and we define it with the, with the IK uh, controller. And I'm gonna quickly just um, explain how an IK uh, system works 
because it's important to understand what is actually going on, because in this case we're gonna use the IK system in reverse, kinda. You, you'll see what I mean. So I'm just gonna quickly create an armature, and I'm just gonna create a few bones. So let's say like this. And then I'm gonna create another bone, which I will disconnect to Alt-P. And in pose mode, this will be our arcade controller. So shift click to the second bone, shift I to make this um, IK setup. And this bone now got a IK constraint. So this is here in the bottom. And now if I move this part here, all the rotations of all bones up to this, the last bone, because that's that's the length of our IK chain, the starter line, will be calculated by just the position of this one bone. So that's fairly easy. And we can limit this chain by setting up a certain number of bones that it has to influence. Zero means it goes all the way to the first bone. We can set it up to maybe two bones. So it just solves those two bones or three and goes all the way three and so on. So I think you get it. But in this case, we so we're gonna do the same thing here. But in this case, we're gonna use this chain in reverse that we're gonna use this uh, IK controller as a fixed point, and we're gonna just move this part here. So that's important to understand that we're gonna uh, do this thing kind of in reverse. And the way we set it up, either you create a completely new bone, which is already independent, or you can um, extrude it here. The direction isn't really important, but it has to be independent because when I move it, it's still connected. So uh, we need to with Alt-P clear the parent so that it's independent. We go into pose mode and we create this IK chain here. So this will be the IK controller. We can also name it IK controller. And with the next bone in the chain, we um, click it with uh, shift and then shift I to active bone. And now you see the dotted line, which shows us how far the chain is uh, going. And now if we move this piece here, you can already see we created this pivot point here which is already pretty cool. And it kind of works, but there are still some, some kicks that we need to figure out. So as you can see here, what needs to happen is that this part needs to be uh, still horizontal. It, it's not allowed to, to move and rotate. And also this piece here, when we play it, it always stays horizontal, no matter how, how much you uh, open or close the clamp, it always stays horizontal. So these are the two things that we need to uh, focus on. And also we have this part here that, that always stays very rigid, so it doesn't move at all. With here, this one, it also moves a little bit. You can see, so this one rotates up, this one rotates in this direction, and this rotates, or this just moves along with the bones. So we have three points that we need to address so what we need to do now is limit the influence of this whole chain to go not to the first bone, but actually go just to this point here. So that these two um, two bones aren't affected by the whole uh, IK setup. And uh, we can do this by uh, when we click on this bone here, you can see that's the line that shows us where the influence is going, how far it is reaching. So now currently it's reaching up to the whole part here. When we set it to two bones, it's going from here. Then three bones, four bones. And we just wanted to influence those two bones, nothing else. So now we set it to two. And now when we move this part, you see the whole chain is solved just with those two bones. The other ones aren't influenced at all. So now the setup works as we intended it. Pretty cool, huh? So now we need to make sure that this bone here also stays very horizontal, no matter how much we close and open the clamp. So currently it's following the bones previously, so these ones, and it just goes down. So we need to make sure that it keeps its rotation. And what I've found out is the easiest solution to this is just taking one piece that has always the same rotation, so the horizontal rotation to the whole setup, and just copying its rotation. And for our case, we could maybe take either this piece here, so this this whole big piece here, or maybe even this piece, this piece, or even this bone. And I think uh, taking this bone is the easiest solution. So this will also stay horizontal, no matter what. So uh, we can 
uh, transfer the rotation from this bone here to this here. And it's easy with the bone constraint, copy rotation. So we just select the armature. Uh, the name of the bone is just bone, okay. And we select it. And you already see it straighten up. And now you can see, okay, it stays horizontal. That's good. But when we move the whole rig and rotate it, you see it keeps its rotation relative to the whole rig. So that's what we want to have. So this already works pretty well. So this is already one thing. Now we also want this thing to move with the, um, with the whole clamp at the same rate. And what is happening currently here, so when we look at the gripper here again, this part has the same rotation as this part here. They always rotate the same amount. <clears throat> so it is actually very easy to, to copy that. And we use the copy rotation constraint. And we just need to select this armature, this bone here, which is called bone four. I didn't name the bones, but uh, who cares? <laughs> bone four, and it automatically gets uh, like the same rotation. So we maybe have to adjust this a little bit. And you can already see as soon as I rotate this bone, the other bone follows the same rotation. So let's put it right here. And now, okay, awesome. One step further. So we are basically done. But what I would like to do is one more thing. And this is that when we move this, this, I don't know, this rod, you can see we can go very far. So we can actually detach the whole setup. The same with the other part, it can go very far so that pieces go through each other. And just to make things a little bit easier to control later on. So that's why I would like to uh, limit its movement on its local Y axis, or in this case, the, the global X axis. And we do this with another constraint, which is the limit location constraint. So currently we have it on um, moving left and right. So, okay, that's cool. But now you can also limit the axis to certain distances. Um, and we can, first we go into local space because it, we still want to move it around, but it still needs to be uh, limited on its own little, in its own little world, which is the local space. So we can um, limit the x-axis completely, so we can't move it up and down. So you can see here, this is its x-axis, and when I try to move it, I can't, because I limit it completely. We can also limit it on a z-axis, so z-axis is this one. So when I try to move it on a z-axis, I also can't. And we will limit it on its y-axis, its local y-axis, which is this one here. So now we can't move it at all. <laughs> But we want to move it, but just a little bit. So we can set up, okay, the minimum y, let's say, let's start with a simple number, let's say minus 10, and we go to maximum plus 10. And then we move it and see how it works. And you see, okay, that's already something, but it's still not enough. So let's go all the way to the left and let's change the minimum to something much bigger. And you see it, it moves with, with us, with the limit. So we can set it up slowly up until this point, maybe. So let's say minus 50, that's a good number. So now when we move it, you see it has this narrow, narrow like window of minus 50 centimeters to 10 centimeters. But we wanna have it to move a little bit more to the right side. So I just grab it and move it as far as I can and even more. And you can see in the top left corner here that I actually moved it, but due to the limitations, it, it can't go further, but we can change the limitations a little bit so that it actually goes a little bit further. And we can go to maybe like, let's say 35 looks good. So now if we move it, you can see this is our range that looks pretty cool. It doesn't stretch too much. It doesn't clip into this part. So, okay, I think we can work with this. So let's, let's first um, reset all the parts with um, Alt G, you set uh, you reset the location. With Alt R, you reset the rotation. And now we go into edit mode, and we are just gonna copy all those parts here, except the, the main bone. So we do um, Shift D to duplicate them. Then we cancel this. We take the um, transformation pivot point, and you, we set it to the 3D cursor, because it's right in the middle here. So now when we uh, press Control M, we mirror the selection that we currently have and we just press z for the z-axis enter 
and now we have the exact copy but mirrored on the bottom. Now, when you go to pose mode, you see all the constraints are still there. When I move it, suddenly it all works and it seems to work, <laughs> at least. So now all we need to do is um, attach those parts to the bones that we have here, so all of the whole model. Just attach it to those uh, according parts and we do this by what we can do is either attach them hand by hand so select first the object then the armature then with a control tab go into pose mode select the bone control p for parenting and choose bone and now when i move the bone the rod is moving with this piece also with the bone the same we can do here so first we select this part then the armature control tab we choose this bone or this bone it doesn't really matter just one of those control p bone and now it moves with us and um, since i have this handy add-on which is called parent to nearest bone i could just basically select everything except this big part the armature right click parent to nearest bone and now this should have done all the work for us so let's see yeah almost almost so this looks pretty good already but we see that those pieces here are these here are uh, parented the wrong way so let's parent them to maybe um oh let's say let's parent it to this main thing so now when we move the bone again yeah now it looks really good so we can do change the display of the bones as sticks so we see the see the the whole clamp a little bit better I also deactivate the axis now let's see how it looks yeah it looks really really good what we can do is also make the limitations a little bit um, bigger for this part here so that it, the clamp actually closes so we can go to maybe let's see let's see like uh, almost this part like maybe minus 55 Otherwise, this will stretch too much. But okay, let's go to minus 60 until the clamp closes. Or not 60, maybe, what is it? 65.5 or minus 65. Yeah, that's good, that's good. And if you still need to make it up until this point, then you just remodel the clamp and make it maybe just to close it with the mesh. <laughs> Okay, and that's basically it. So now when we look at the clamp, we choose the bone and then I will deactivate the bones. I set myself a, a hotkey for B to hide the bones, but I can still move them. So now we have this cool clamp system that actually works very well. It all has its pivot points. You just have one controller that controls the whole movement. And yeah, that's it. That's basically it. So, uh, I hope you like this one. This will be now a part of a bigger project that will come in the next few weeks. Now we have talked about pistons, about IK setups, about robot legs, about ro robot arms, about the robot hand, pistons, gears, cables. So the next logical step would be to put all those things into use and create a robot with all those cool things that, that happen at once. And uh, this is what we we're going to do uh, in the next few tutorials, um, which is use all those things that we learned in the previous um, videos and put them together to a proper project, personal project, like a use case. So we're going to create a robot with some cool legs, with some cool arms, with those clamps as hands, maybe a head, some cables, gears, so that everything works together and we have a nice complex robot that uh, will be... Um, yeah, it will be fun to control. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope it was very helpful um, for you to see those systems uh, working and how they work. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Okay, bye-bye.